how can we go from a very simple idea and we develop and we make a transformation of that simple idea and we reach a fundamental key in calculus. So I'm talking about moving from the coordinate system, X and Y, And making transformation to that coordinate system, we are going to arrive to a key calculus fundamental topic. This is today's video. This is today's podcast. Let's hear. Suppose that you have a point on the coordinate system. Let's start with one simple point on the coordinate system. I'm talking about, I don't know. 110. Okay, remember 110. And I'm going to pick another point. 220. Every student with a minimum idea about the coordinate system knows how to do, how to plot points. How can we transform this idea? Okay, um, let's label the coordinate system. So this is the X, everyone knows that. This is the Y. And let's make another transformation. Let's say that X will be time and Y will be distance. And now the point has a meaning, no? The X and the Y has a meaning, no? The X is time, let's say hours, and the Y is just distance in miles. I'm talking about this type of transformation in order to introduce a key calculus idea. So, how can you transform this into a more sophisticated concept? You can create more points, but I want that the students know that we can connect right here, these two points, and we generate a line, a line segment in this case. And we can start the conversation saying that what will be this point? Zero, zero. What is the meaning of that point? Zero, zero. If the X represents the time in hours and the Y represents the distance in miles. The students can say zero time, zero distance. Okay. So now we are working with two sets. We are working with the time and we are working with the distance. I'm not talking about algebra here. I'm not talking about domain or range or X and Y independent variable, dependent variable. I'm just talking about reality. Time, distance. And what is the meaning of that zero comma zero in this particular transformation? So you can make the students to extend the line. No? They can extend the line. This is still a line. And you can ask the students to create more points that follow that pattern. And you ask the students for because this is mathematics, how to find a particular point. They can say, let me use red, and they can say, oh, the X is going by one. One hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, and so on. And the Y is going by zero, 10, 20, is going by 10. 10, 20, 
30, 40, okay, one hour. And the students can see how the structure in mathematics is related, integrated with reality. That is not a simple X and Y. And you start the learning transformation, not only the learning, the practice, the teaching practice, you are transforming the mind of that person that is listening and is paying attention to you. It's not to come over here and boom, start talking about the function. And of course, I forget here to put zero, zero time, no distance. And the students can create more pairs of numbers. And this is when you talk about function. It's a relation between one set, the red set, the blue set, the time, the distance. We, we, we have to work this way if we pursue lifetime learning. Of course, we have not reached calculus yet, but we have reached algebra now. And we start with a simple representation of two points and a simple analysis of a reality. And now is when you start talking about function, the relation between the X and the Y, and how this relation works in an equation that you can have here Y equals something. How much is Y? Y depends on X. How can you create that structure in algebra? And you have to push that in your class or when you're teaching or when you're learning, specifically when you're teaching someone. So how can I push this? Is Y equal X? No. It's not Y equal X. And the students start thinking, it's not Y equal X. Because when X is equal to zero, Y is equal to zero. When X is equal to one, Y is equal to 10. When X is equal to two, Y is equal to 20. So I'm going by adding 10. My Y is adding 10. And how can I express that in mathematical terms? 10X. X equals zero, zero times 10, zero. X equals one, one times 10, X equals two. And now the student discover algebra and discover function and discover linear function and discover a fundamental idea for calculus. Because that number 10 is a rate of change. It's not the same if you come up with rise over run and you come up with y2 minus y1 equal divided by x2 minus x1. It's not the same. It's no lifetime teaching. It's no lifetime learning. What do you think? Now our transformation was moved to to algebra, was moved to to structures, y equals 10x. And now the student can understand that this is distance and this is rate and this is time. And, and we can work with a function of time. It's a function, it's a relation. The independent variable here is the time. It's a function of time. It's 10 times t. That is 
better to work with tea. But still, they can they can understand that that f of t represents distance, and this is a key in calculus. The function and its meaning. And we can redesign the reality. And we can redesign the reality with structures, with mathematics structures, like functions, equations. And we can see, for example, that the car is moving and I want to know the speed of the car. I want to know the speed, how fast, how quick the car is moving. And this is another player. What is the speed? Okay, the speed here is 10 miles every hour, which is our slope in the first scenario. But this is the speed, 10 miles per hour. And they can say that is a constant speed. And I want to know the graph of the constant speed. We're going to make another transformation to the coordinate system. Let's see. And now I have the same coordinate system. I have here the x. I have here the y. I have here the time. In hours. But right here, I'm going to have the speed, the velocity, the speed, the velocity. I start talking about that. So what is that speed? Every hour, 10 miles per hour. Every hour. No matter what. The car is going at the same rate no matter what. Look at the difference between the two graphs. Distance, time. And now, time for the speed. That is no more than the slope. That is speed 10 miles per hour is a slope. And here is when we reach a fundamental calculus idea. We are talking about, in other words, we are going, we are talking about derivative. We are talking about differentiation. Ten miles per hour is no more than another function. It's another function. Ten. 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 Every hour. Every fraction of an of the time. Separated by hours. That's another function. So what is calculus is how can we use that initial initial function initial representation and we can generate another function that is the rate in this particular case 10 miles per hour 
And this is the differential calculus. How can you go back from here to the original function? The second important key idea in calculus. Integration. So we can move from this function here. We can move from the velocity right there, the speed, back to the original function. Of course, when you have f of t, which is three, uh, 10 times t, that's the original one. But what is this function right here? Or let's use the x and y notation, f of x equal 10x. And this is when dy dx comes to play, which is 10. How can we go back to here? Integration of this function. What is the integration of 10? 10x. This is calculus. This is the two fundamental keys of calculus. Differentiation and integration. But everything is coming from that particular example. Is a relation between two functions. The y equals 10x, the speed is 10, and how can I go back to 10x from the speed? This is the first idea and the most important idea of this conversation this week. Uh, podcasts, how do I teach math? And calculus prerequisites. I want you to think on this and I want you to analyze these two important perspectives. The speed right there is super important. The two functions are super important. And look at the representation of both. Right here we have an increasing line with a constant ray, and here we have another constant, but it's a horizontal line. What happens when those rates change? What happens when we don't have a constant rate? That will be another topic in another podcast. I'm going to finish right here the video. I don't want to bother you too much. Um, thank you for the new subscribers. Um, Math Topics is opening a new membership um, with access to math presentations, uh, worksheets, um, videos, members only videos. Uh, it will be another experience, another approach uh, between you and me. Uh, I invite you to to take this in consideration and thank you for helping and supporting the topics. See you in the next video. Thank you. <laughs>